So today we got the Sima X5C out again. I'm here in my basement. Um, the reason I'm going to show you guys this little quad is because it's actually been one of my uh, favorites for a long time. I currently have a Phantom and I have a couple of other smaller quads. But this is a great a little RC to learn to kind of get into the hobby of flying quadcopters. Um, it's cheap. You can, pick, you can pick it up basically anywhere on eBay or Amazon and you can get it for under $50. This particular model is called the Sima X5C. And it is a 2.4 gigahertz unit. It comes with a remote like this. It's pretty nice, it has a digital LCD screen right here so you can look at all your trends. Um, what else is great about this quad? Now, currently this model right here, I took the camera off, but it did come with a fixed camera. I mean, it was a pretty low quality camera. I'll be honest with you, it was only two megapixels, although when I did upload the pictures to my uh, computer after, it definitely looked like it was lower than two megapixels. So I basically just took it off. I do kind of like some of the flight dynamics of this quad. It's very light, uh, even if you crash it, you know, I've hit my ceiling with it many times. I've hit a lot of stuff actually with it. Never broke a single part so far. Um, I do keep the prop guards on only because they're really not that heavy and they really won't affect your flight dynamics that much. It's already very light. The batteries they use, I'm going to show you the batteries right here. I just walk over right here. This is basically, I got a couple of them right here. It's a small little LiPo like this. It's a 1S. This particular one is actually the upgraded version. It's a 650 milliamp hour. Uh, battery. The standard ones they come with is a 500. You could pick up about four of them on eBay for under $20. Um, the flight time you will get is around five minutes. Now, generally, I don't really fly more than three minutes because the packs tend to heat up. And after a couple of flights, they will begin to swell. So, you know, if you want to maximize the longevity of your, of your LiPos themselves, I really recommend not uh, flying until the um, low battery warning goes on. In the low battery warning, I have another video where actually previously I uploaded it where you could see the little LEDs flash. That's how you know that the light low battery warning is on. Um, but you do have a couple of seconds of flight time after, so don't fly far away because it will you know, pretty much descend right away. So we're going to turn this on. I'm going to put it on the floor. We're going to show you how you activate it and uh, what else we could do. So first, it's always best to turn on the remote. Just going to flip this switch. So it beeps, you can see the little green LED beeping. We're gonna turn on the quad right here. And um, I always place the on switch facing me and I just put on the floor, you can see that this says, all oh, the, the LEDs are blinking rapidly. That means that it's not yet armed. So we will have to arm it, um, you know, with this stick later. So I'm gonna put it on the floor. So here we go. Let's come up to the remote right here. So you can see they're both blinking. As soon as I raise this stick up, it will make a noise and it'll arm. So it's armed now. You can see the LEDs are solid on the quad itself. And that means we're ready for flight. You know, so let's see, I'm just gonna go up a little bit. So it's active. So the first mode that it's on is always a uh, low mode. Um, you could see right here in the little LCD display, there's an L right here. So there's an L. If I press this button right here, which is your uh, left toggle right here, it's going to go into high mode. You can see that now it says high. So basically what that means is we'll have more lean and it'll be a much faster quad. So let me switch it right now back to low mode. I really recommend you guys use the low when you're first learning. And you can see I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to raise it and I'm going to do a couple of uh, forward and back passes. You can see how fast it um, you know, responds in certain modes. So let's just go. All right, so right now we're in low. So you can see even when I hit max forward, this is basically at top speed. It's not leaning that much. The quad itself is very stable. As you can tell, the gyro works pretty well for a non-GPS enabled quad. So this is low right here. So, you know, I'll go back and forward a little bit. Left, right, pretty slow, but very stable. Right now we're gonna press high and you guys could see the different angle and uh, how it leans forward. So we're gonna go into high. Now it's high. You can see it's basically a completely different quad. The lean is, is pretty high and it's pretty fast. You know, so for here, for me, I could do high. Really doesn't matter. Um, what else you can do, you can do a couple flips with it. I'm just gonna show you guys one flip. Oh, it's all right, you can, you can hit whatever. You can see it's pretty, pretty stable. I'm gonna do a couple other flips, let's see. I'm gonna do uh, another backward flip. 
So it does kind of, you know, jump in elevation, but keep in mind this is like a seven, less than a seven foot uh, ceiling right here. So it's pretty stable. You can tell I can hover by it, you know, no problem. Let's uh, try to land it right here on this weight. So we're just going to try to land it right here on my uh, bench press. Oh, oh, accidents. Okay, it's fine. But you know, there's a lot of a lot of feedback from the air. So whenever you're trying to land on something like this, keep in mind. You know, I, I don't generally do this. I mean, whatever, it doesn't really matter. So let's take it up a little bit. We'll fly around. Currently, I have it in high mode once again. Up, oh, wrong way, wrong way. Let's see. Where's the forward? It's pretty stable. As you can tell, the, the drone, I'm actually doing some of this on purpose, some of these impacts. I am a little bit of a better uh, pilot than you guys might think. Although, you know, that's arguable, honestly. Um, but it is very stable, you can do whatever you want, it's a cheap quad to get into, you know, if you look at the photography, you can get a different version, they do have versions with Wi-Fi, um, I don't particularly care about that. Oh, there we go. But anyways, you know, I've crashed it a couple times, literally no problems, as you can tell it's still very well balanced and centered, I haven't really had to adjust any trim. And we're flying for a couple minutes already so far, I would say. The lights aren't flashing yet. So the battery life is, is pretty good, you know, in my opinion. I'm gonna kind of get it right here and we'll just turn it off. So there you go. That's the Sima X5C. You know, if you guys have any questions, whatever you want to know about it, just please do ask. Um, it's a great little quad to get into. You know, you can get even larger versions but those are called the Sima X8. So the 5 is the smaller version, the X8 is a slightly larger version. Uh, if you guys are curious, let me just walk you over to my other quad right here. This is a Phantom, just for a size comparison. We'll just look it over right here. So this one is the Phantom 4K. Um, this is what the Sima looks like, if we could just put it on top. You can tell that, you know, the Sima is smaller, um, obviously, but you can get the Sima X8, not the 5, and it will basically be the same size as the Phantom. Um, but this is a good quad. I've had this for a couple years. You know, I've had this one for maybe a couple years before I could really afford a Phantom and really not be worried about the price. But now that they're so affordable, you know, pretty much anyone can get them. Um, but still, keep in mind, you know, you should always get like, one to, to um, practice at home with. And clearly, I'm not going to fly the, uh, the DJI Phantom at home, you know, even though it has ground sensors. Really not recommended any kind of impact on these, and it's pretty much hundreds of dollars worth of repair. These are good, fun toys, you know, you could fly indoors, you could fly outdoors. But keep in mind, the range, you know, if you're going to do a height test, the range is pretty bad. The most I think I've went on it is maybe 150 to 200 feet. After which the signals, you pretty much have severe signal loss. Um, uh, but that's it, you know, if you fly basically not too far away, this is a perfect little quad to get. You know, nothing to really worry about breaking. I never broke anything on it, actually. I've had plenty, plenty of impacts, even with trees. Um, but that's it, you know, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, if you have any questions, please do let me know. And um, if anyone's curious, we also have this very little one. Uh, so I have a family of quads, actually. Uh, this particular one is very, uh, well, it flies alright, it's, I, I mean, basically the rule is the smaller they are, the less stable they are, and um, that really is, is true, and I learned that myself, but this is basically a $20 quad you can get on eBay, it's called the M62, uh, this is about 40 now, 40 to 50, at the time when I bought it, maybe it was a little more, I mean, these are in the over $500 range, this particular one, I think was uh, 700 I paid for it, so this does have the 4K camera, um, this is a good, uh, cheap quad to get. Anyways, that's it. I'm going to end this video now. Uh, I think I'm running out of space on my iPad. Uh, thanks. Thank you guys so much. Please 
like, comment, and subscribe. Till next time.